Hey everyone, it's Sean. Welcome back to the channel. A little vehicle video for y'all. Try to make this one uh, short and simple. I know some people, uh, when they like to watch my videos, they kind of want to see me actually remove parts and stuff on a vehicle. Uh, that's not always the case. Um, you know barring equipment i don't have a tripod or anything to mount up and do all that but i do want to cover uh the issue that i've uh this proc came up in my 2018 uh jeep wrangler sahara jlu and uh what to do about it so let's first start off with the the issue all right so the issue if you don't mind all the dinging going on right now check engine light and p0128 on a code scanner okay that's uh that's what needs to be resolved so when you look up that code uh concerning jeep wranglers it seems to be typically one of two things uh, either the uh, coolant temperature sensor or the thermostat could also be stuck open causing the temperature to be slightly off now when i operate my car it looks like the temperatures are correct and so i'm thinking it's primarily the temp sensor okay however when you go to like google online uh those products we well, you, you kind of have to be careful uh, most of the videos i found online cover the jk model uh, hardly any covering the jl except for maybe like one um and uh, they can kind of be misleading if you're not careful um, because even the part numbers, part numbers are not great with how they're listed online and stuff. This is a temperature sensor, okay? But this listed online for my model vehicle, which came out half year in 2018 with the JK being earlier that year, uh, actually goes to a JK, not a JL. In the JL model, your temp sensor is actually built inside of the thermostat housing as well. I do believe that this right here is the temperature sensor because we have a plug on the end feeding to the confuser or electronics, okay? Now, there is one video I found online that showed how to replace the uh, thermostat. Um, for those of you who also need a part number, here's the one that I'm using, Duralast, bought from uh, AutoZone, I think. I think Duralast is AutoZone brand. I can't remember. I get confused with stores. But, uh, but yeah, uh, he, the individual does a very good job explaining, um, you know, what you need to replace. Um, I'm basically just going to follow that same steps, but I wanted to kick this video off to talk about that code and to warn about being careful with what you buy. And then you have the JLU model uh, or JL model. Your temperature sensor is built into the thermostat housing. It's all one unit now, and it is located right down there. You can see the wires coming to the sensor. And then you can see the top of one bolt, two bolt. The third bolt's going to be at the very bottom. If I was to orient that way, you can see the opening right there. Third bolt's at the bottom with one and two being top and right. And the tip of the sensor being right there. So what that means is uh, in order for me to reach this conveniently, and I don't know, maybe I'm just getting older, but my fingers and stuff like to lock up when I work on vehicles now. I gotta make this a wee bit easier for myself. If I was younger, I'd just probably leave a lot of this stuff in and finagle my fingers to make it work because I hate tearing down a lot of stuff just to remove something and replace it. But um, but now that I'm getting older, I, I'm gonna have to take my time and, pay, and be patient and actually remove things to try to get out of the way to make work a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove uh, this box right here. I'm gonna loosen up these two C-clamps right there and just kind of get this uh as best as possible out of the way all right let's first have a discussion on what it took to get this removed out of the way uh two bolts sitting here both 10 millimeter heads uh and i was able to unscrew them and remove them the uh compression rings that we have here c clamps whatever they want they're called uh, both I loosened with a screwdriver 
okay and then this tube right here i pushed this side in and wiggled it out then i was able to wiggle out this side of the intake uh, and then off of here and move it over that direction now i have a lot more room in here to work my hands uh, I need to focus on removing uh, this upper tube, kind of smaller tube, this wider tube uh, down in here. I realize that's not a best green shot. There we go. You should see that clamp down in there now. Uh, right down in there. Um, like I said, this sensor right here and then those three bolts well, i don't fully have it out yet but i figure it's a good opportunity to stop and just talk about it for a second as far as the uh, sensor goes this little plastic tab right here it's lifted upwards it pulls up out of the socket and then you use it to put pressure on the back end of a plastic tab that's in here which uh, will allow it to Come over that lip right there and you can unseat it okay a little bit on the uh, finicky side but uh, you know just work at it uh, patiently and you'll be able to get it off all right so I've got that hose clamp right there removed this bigger one's a little bit harder for me to do so I'm gonna try to remove it um, maybe I can remove it after I pull out the uh, thermostat and temperature sensor housing on one piece or that can come and bite me in the butt as far as the bolts go, okay, these bolts here, uh, for me, 10 millimeter head, and then I used a uh, T20 torque spit on a um, screwdriver, the 10 millimeter socket I used to break them loose, and then I just used a screwdriver with a 20, T20 torque spit in order to back them out. It's just easier for me to break something loose with a, um, with a uh, socket, and then to use a screwdriver to, you know, get the screws out. But uh, I'm gonna finish working on this and uh, we'll go get that, come back hopefully with the install. Okay, so the temperature sensor, uh, slightly difficult barring how much grit has accrued at the bottom of it, but doable. Bolts were pretty easy as well. Uh, getting these clamps back, you know, that's always a moderate amount of difficulty, but not too bad. The hardest part for me was getting these tubes removed uh, and you see I had to fully remove the upper tube leading to the radiator, radiator side, engine side, um, to get it off of the old thermostat and sensor housing. Um, maybe because it's the first time this has ever been removed, but, um, uh, but the rubber tubes were so adhered and cramped to it, it's almost like they had become like one piece essentially uh, so what I did is I just slightly worked back the rubber tubing with a screwdriver um, being very careful not to perforate the rubber at all and then I would spray WD-40 underneath the uh, the rubber and uh, you know just kind of do some turning uh, motions and then prime back with a little bit more of the screwdriver and get more WD-40 and eventually it worked itself loose um, and I was able to get this fully off of the tubing. So here goes the two uh, metal retaining rings that have to go back onto the tubing uh, and reattach to the new thermostat. So I'll have to get those back on. But um, but yeah, that was, uh, I would say that was the really the truly difficult part was the tubing. All right, so all that being said, now that I've got everything removed, it's really just the, the inverse. I, um, I'm gonna get well, let's first take a look down here because I, I do have a, an assumption. Here's the old rubber gasket for the uh, old thermostat. Let me get it out of the way. Yeah, we're going to get that out of here. And then uh, looking down in here, uh, you, you see this lip right here? I think I had a slight leak here that's what this appears like to me like I was leaking and I would say that the reservoir over uh, extended months was getting low so I think that's what was causing the issue was a leak um, but I'm gonna have to get this cleaned up I'll scruff it up a little bit um, 
clean it up with some paper towels and uh, kind of send away this rust uh, with some uh, sandpaper, very fine grit. And then um, being sure to get this new thermostat in with the new uh, O-ring all seated up and get everything reattached. So hose clamps definitely, <laughs> as I suspected, gonna be the more difficult part of getting it all back together. As a matter of fact, this one right here, which goes to this side of the uh, pump down there, the hardest one, so I just gave up on it because it wasn't worth the struggle to me. And I got a nice little bag of standard hose clamps, the ones with a uh, screw type locking in mechanism. However, they want to be turned, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, and so I replaced that one down there with one of those, okay? The uh, rest of them have been put back on. So at this point, I'm going to put the uh, air filter inlet, the uh, piping that goes between the mass airflow sensor and throttle body to the filter, all back in, reattach that tube. And now we've got to work on getting coolant back in. But let me get this all back in first. When it comes to refilling with coolant, what I like to do is I like to you know, get the coolant up to the min-max line, and then I'll come down here to the hose. And you'll see this working up here in the bottle. I like to pump the hose to kind of work out air in the line, get some fluid down there, get it going to the thermostat and everything. And that's gonna definitely drop the level in that bottle. Now, once I got it down into the hose, I mean, it's kind of like, a, I guess, a very poor way of bleeding the system. I know they make things to put a pump on the system to feed everything through. I don't have that. But typically, this works for me when I work on cars. I'll pump the, uh, you know, put pressure on the tube, squeezing it, the uh, hose, and uh, work fluid in that way. And then, from that point, I'm gonna, I'll start up the vehicle. I'll let it get up to temp. The fluid level levels will, I'll top this off, fluid levels will start dropping as it circulates through the motor. I'll let everything cool down, remove the cap once it's cool enough to remove the cap, top it off, and uh, run through that process multiple times. Now, the other things I need to do is I need to make sure to keep my eyes down here to see if there's any leaks and keep my eye on that. I don't know the longevity of that hose clamp I put on. Uh, probably somebody's gonna make, the, make a comment saying that that was improper, but uh, you know, that was my decision to make and we'll see how it goes long term. By the time this video is released, uh, once I get done editing and putting it out there on the internet and schedule it, it'll probably be uh, um, a month, maybe a month and a half, almost two months from the date of this recording. So I should know a little bit of something, provide a little bit of feedback probably at that time. So for those who want to know what coolant I used, uh, here it goes. You can see Jeep 2013 till present. Uh, the original dye in the coolant that was used was orange. This one is a purplish color. But you can see that uh, hopefully that's visible. You can see stuff cycling through and coming into here. So, you know, I, I can take it for a drive, but hopefully most of that, uh, most of the air has been worked out at this point. Uh, Oh yeah, one other thing. Don't forget to uh, get yourself a little device to erase the code. There we go. And we're good on the dash now too. All right, well, awesome. Well, if you've uh, enjoyed this, let me know by, uh, uh, by leaving a comment. Uh, I'm pretty sure I haven't hit everything that most people wanna see, but hopefully I've hit a good portion of what will be helpful for a lot of you. Especially looking for this information for your JL or JLU 2018 or later uh, Jeep Wrangler. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. You're already here. Why not? All that being said, take care and goodbye. Mark?